We are already surrounded by robots. They are all around us. We've got robot vacuum cleaners, robot window cleaners. Uh, we use robots in construction. We use robots in, in welding, in inspection. Um, we, of course, use it in, in industry and uh, pretty much anywhere. Um, you're seeing now robots used in hotels for delivery, in hospitals. Um, so the robots are already here. This is not uh, the future. This is, uh, this is what's happening now. Uh, the, um, there is a lot of interest in robotics in the investment community. In the past year or so, there has been uh, around uh, 300 million estimated dollars in, uh, in robotics not related to drones. And um, Google has invested a lot of money uh, as you know, in artificial intelligence and robotics. And um, there is just a, a, re a renewed interest in robotics in, in uh, venture capital. And of course, in academia, there's thousands of students and PhDs doing, uh, studying humanoid robots and other um, robotic systems. Um, what is special about now that wasn't here before there's, there's many theories, but um, one thing for sure is that the, the ease of development today, if you're creative and, and you've got ideas, to, to make hardware today is easier than it was ever before. Um, you have free computer-aided design tools, you have pretty much uh, free 3D printing, uh, uh, forming, and, and CNC. Um, and you've got Alibaba, which gives you direct access to wholesale prices of components. And so if you want to be, if you want to do something, if you've got an idea, you, you can make it happen. You can then first put it on um, a website and show and tell, or then make a, a startup or go on Kickstarter. Um, we're really seeing a, a new golden age of... Um, robotics development. Now, the, the biggest beneficiaries of, uh, of this latest uh, uh, enamoration with, uh, with robotics are the, the drones. So the drones, uh, essentially, they are flying cameras. But, uh, it started about four or five years ago when, in the hobby community, somebody managed to get a, a tiny microprocessor to stabilize the four rotors of the of the drone, of the quadcopter, and from there it, it very quickly became a commercial product. Today, th this year, uh, DJI, the leading company that produces uh, retail drones, uh, it's estimated that they'll invoice about a billion dollars. And uh, about $400 million were invested in, in, uh, in drone startups. So, um, so drones are, are uh, exceptional because what they have is a, is a flying camera. It's basically a camera that <laughs> <laughs> a camera that, that is remote controlled. It can fly. It can do something that a human cannot do. And the camera has also some intelligence. Um, it can do uh, triangulation. It can, it can compute where it is and go through waypoints, it can have uh, uh, virtual barriers in order not to go into airspace. Um, it, has, it has onboard computer, a lot of sensors that allow him to do uh, elaborate uh, computation. So drones are, um, are of particular interest in this robotic um, evolution due to their ability to, to carry the camera. Now, Cameras, uh, you may know, we, we, we consume a lot of cameras. We, we, we produce uh, uh, gazillions of terabytes of, of photos. Um, we, we buy billions of cameras every year. And um, th there's a proliferation of, of pixels and, and frames per second and, um, and, and uh, terabytes on, a, on an SD card. And um, this proliferation, there is, there is another uh, branch of this proliferation, which is in motion control. So when you've got this, uh, this big, this nice camera, 
and you want to make a linear shot or you want to you want to have a, a stabilized shot you need accessories and the drone is, is a good example of, an of such an accessory. You can't reach uh, 50 meters without, without a drone. Um, in Hollywood, they use um, expensive toys to do that. So they have this, this big robot was used in a production of the movie uh, Gravity to do those uh, space flying uh, shots. And so, so basically, the camera, uh, when it's strapped onto, uh, mechanical devices uh, provides very interesting shots that cannot be produced just by a human cameraman. Now, we, we take a look at, uh, at computer vision. So computer vision has evolved the past um, 30 years to, to a, a stage where you have today open source software for pretty much understanding the scene. So you can you can take a, a video stream and, um, and from it realize that this is a cop, this is a face, um, understanding uh, context and objects. Google have launched recently in Google Photos, you, you just type uh, you know, a car and it will show you cars in your photo stream. Um, so um, computer vision and, and artificial intelligence now combined with uh, robots and cameras could uh, provide very interesting stuff, very interesting shots. So if you need to isolate uh, an object inside the scene, let's say if a cameraman is covering a, a wedding, you could, you could tell the, the, the robot camera, okay, just focus on the bride, that's it. And, and then the second camera can do other stuff. So. The, the idea is that the, the, the robot with computer vision um, provides a whole new dimension. Today, if you take a camera, you've got all these automatic modes, party, night shot, um, I don't know, uh, hills, whatever, and which control some elements and automate some elements in photography. But you don't see on the menu something like that tells you, um, go left three meters, and uh, lift a bit the, uh, the yaw, um, which would improve your, your photo composition. Um, so at RoboSavvy, my, my company, we've been developing robots for, for years, uh, mostly in, uh, in entertainment and, and research. And uh, we had an opportunity to work on a, an interesting project with a production company in Africa. Uh, for bringing the camera very close to, to wildlife. And during that project, I realized that there is really a huge opportunity in, in democratizing the expensive motion control that exists for, for Hollywood, for high budget productions. Um, so we, we started working on a, on a couple of, of prototypes um, that uh, essentially will uh, it's, it's robots where you, you put on the camera and the, the robot doesn't have just normal sensors of distance and GPS and uh, um, but also uses the, the feed from the, uh, the video stream in order to um, understand the, the, the scene and control the robot um, yeah, control the robot to uh, to bring it to the right place uh, at the right time. So we've got, we've, we're developing a couple of prototypes. One is a, a four-wheeled robot, and the other one is a, is a Segway platform. And ultimately, we see this as something that will assist, uh, in, in the meantime, uh, assist photographers. So I present to you the ground drone. We call it a ground drone because uh, everybody knows what a, what a drone is. Um, and can we can we see the the feed from the the camera? Yeah, good. So we have a we're seeing here on the screen what what the camera sees, and um, so this is this is basically a, a Segway. So this Segway is able to carry up to a hundred kilos. It's actually a, a Chinese Segway better than the original Segway. Um, 
it's, um, inside it's got an, a desktop computer. It's an i7 processor with tons of memory. It's got huge computation power. Um, it's got here lots of other electronics and, and video feed. Uh, it's got a depth camera, and the actual camera here is mounted on a, a system that stabilizes uh, in one direction, and here is another direction. It's pretty resilient, sort of. If I shake it about, if you see, the robot is moving, but, but it's, the image is pretty stable. Um, and it's using this, uh, it's called a gimbal stabilizer, which uh, evolved dramatically in the past couple of years, thanks to uh, the, uh, the drones. The drones carry the camera, and the camera needs to be stabilized. And these small motors, five years ago, were like 2,000 euros. Now you can buy them for $40. Um, so what we're, what we're going to show you here, I've got here the, our photographer and uh, uh, PhD in robotics, uh, Vitor, and he's, uh, he's going to operate the robot, sometimes remotely and sometimes just put him into a, a mode of operation which will be autonomous. And hopefully we'll get this uh, working on stage. So the first, um, the first demo we want to show is, um, is essentially a, uh, a camera that is sitting stationary, but is able to, um, to see the, uh, the person and, f and track the face. Let's see if that works. Yeah. So I'm moving around. It sees, the camera sees me. We're seeing a live feed from the camera. The camera sees me, and as I'm walking, it tracks my face. Now, that can be useful, for example, if you've got an animated speaker on stage or um, in, a, in an interview, if you want to track user one or, user, or you know, the, the two people that are being interviewed. Um, so now, this, the, the robot at the moment is stationary. Now, what we can do next is show a simulation of rails and dollies. So in, in movie production, normally they have these rails, they, they put the camera on top, and they slide it in order to get that smooth action. Um, we can do a similar thing, um, but without the rails, just by tracking my face, um, and the robot sort of moves itself in order to stay aligned with, uh, with me. So as I'm walking, it, it walks uh, with me, and yeah, I hope it doesn't fall off the stage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so it... it it captures me, it understands my face, and it knows that it needs to, to follow me. Um, the next demo um, will involve the, this little dip depth sensor, the Kinect. Uh, the, the idea is that the Kinect is able to identify me as a human being. It understands limbs. It understands arms and legs and face and torso. And so now it's no longer a face tracking, but it's a full body tracking. So I can actually turn around, and it still follows me, because it understands my shape. So the robot now follows me. This is quite daunting. I had nightmares about this. So <laughs> I'm being chased by a robot. <laughs> so as I'm being chased by the robot, the camera oh, kind of follows me. Oh. <laughs> Well, it changed its mind. Maybe it's not, I wasn't interesting enough. It found somebody there with a better lederhosen. Um, so that's um, <laughs> now we're gonna we're gonna do another little experiment. <laughs> okay. So I have here a little three D printed uh, statuette. I put it here. Okay, and Vitorna will will um, focus on on her and and zoom in. We've got a remote control zoom mechanism here, so he's going to zoom in and then move the robot around. Now, as the robot moves, the statue stays um, in sight. 
more or less. Uh, but this is a kind of, of thing that is normally for a human, it's quite difficult to, to move and in Zoom uh, actually be able to, uh, to focus on, on an item like that. Uh, this could be useful for, for example, if you're shooting um, insects or, or you want to focus on something and, on, that I'm holding. Or, um, but it's just to show the, the capability of when you mix um, vision processing uh, together with um, uh, com computer vision together with robotics and, and camera positioning. So, yeah, we managed to get the demos working. That's amazing. We were very concerned. We had backup plans. <laughs> um, so finally, what I what I would like to to say is that we are we are working currently with uh, production companies to, to make sure that the features of this first prototype uh, matches their needs and expectations. And so initially this will be targeted at kind of low, low cost production, DSLR production, um, where, where the robot can carry stuff, can heavy, carry heavy load. In a, in a conference you, you will see these walking around alongside a director rather than a photographer, it upgrades the role of the, f of the, um, uh, of the cameraman. And, um, but ultimately where we want to go with this is to have a, a retail product, a, a selfie stick on wheels where you put on your, your iPhone and it, um, it, it tracks your special moments, it follows you, it, uh, it, it can follow your babies or your cat. And, um, and the, the nice thing is that you can, you can have like apps there that, that have special uh, features like uh, tracking special objects or um, going in a, spe in a, in a path. Or for example, path planning is, is a big deal. The, the, uh, the depth sensor can allow the robot to understand the environment and avoid obstacles avoid people. So at the wedding, as he's tracking the, the bride, he doesn't crash into the uh, in-laws. So the, that's, that's sort of ultimately where we're going. And one last thing is that, is that something that is completely untapped is the, the thing called composition. Cam um, when, you, when you have an understanding of the scene, you can actually look into the aesthetics of the shot. And there's, there are many theories about aesthetics of shots, and that's where we want to get. We want to basically get the brain of the photographer into the computer, and then you can kind of download a photographer's style and make your, your movies and your, uh, and your photographs to uh, perfection. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, take that with you. Lima <laughs> Schweitzer. <laughs>